What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's FPL team selection time for Game Week 31. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I i wouldn't say I'm all over the place with transfers this week, but I have at least three different sets of transfers that I'm looking at. And even then, there's other ways I could go with it. And I think I need to kind of use this video to try and narrow down exactly what I want to do, exactly who I need for the run-in, and also how to manage Game Week 33. So I suspect, and I'm recording the intro before I record the video, this is going to be quite a long one. So I'm going to tell you right now what I'm going to do, and then you can skip ahead to whatever you want, or ignore it, or just watch the whole thing. I'll let you decide. So we'll go through Game Week 30 quickly. We'll look at Game Week 31 as a whole. So I'm going to talk you through um, captaincy, how the team is looking, all that in one go. I'm not going to go through it in different sections. Then I'm going to show you the potential transfers and talk about why I'm thinking about them. And then I'm actually going to tinker and show you those transfers on the FPL page and what it might mean for future game weeks. Because game week 33 is becoming a little bit of a problem for me. I've got the free hit. I don't really want to use it. And I'm going to talk about why throughout this video. So please do give it a like if you enjoy it. Hit subscribe if you're new around here. And let's jump into it. So game week 30 turned out to be a bit of a mess in the end. So I'm on 1,893rd uh, overall rank, which is another red arrow. So I've gone down from about 1,400. Now I'm just inside the top 2K. So things are kind of unraveling a little bit. 54 points was kind of a bit rubbish. I think to stop the green arrow or to get a green arrow, I would have needed about 61, 62 points. So I wasn't far off, but it just shows how tight the margins are when I'm this high in rank. So it's kind of, it did really well, kind of gaming 18 to maybe 26 or something like that. But since then, it's kind of going downhill a little bit now captaincy wise i got it absolutely spot on harry kane 13 points salah getting a return before his good run of fixtures was great as well because i've been talking about that run of fixtures and i reckon there wouldn't be so many people considering salah if he hadn't scored against arsenal so i'm happy that i got a goal before everyone jumps on but at the same time i think if he hadn't got that goal a lot more people would ignore him and i think villa and Leeds look like great fixtures so happy to get that at the back, Dawson and Tierney might be my worst use of two free transfers possibly ever. I mean, I've got a really bad short-term memory. Let me know in the comments below if you can remember me making worse transfers. But in Game Week 29, I bought them in. Now, I knew they weren't necessarily the ideal players for Game Week 29, but I also knew long-term they might be okay options. Dawson has conceded five goals, I think, in that time now. He's also scored an own goal. Tierney got me one point, one point, and now he's out for four to six weeks. So, absolutely awful. And by the way, I didn't actually want to play Tierney this week. I wanted to play Rudiger, who I guess I'm okay with being benched because they conceded five goals. But if he'd played, if Thiago Silva didn't get his red card, that probably would have been a clean sheet. So frustrating. Dallas didn't get anything against Sheffield United. So I was hoping to have West Brom, Sheffield United um, fixtures, and then Wolves for Dawson and potentially get three clean sheets. I got zero, and even Martinez couldn't get a clean sheet against Fulham, although he did get four points, which was nice. Blanks for De Bruyne. Song came on at halftime. And Tony, like when I went into that West Ham game, I was on like a 20 to 30 place green arrow, uh, red arrow, sorry. That was it. Like 20 to 30 places is nothing. I thought I've got Dawson. I've got Antonio. The only thing that can go wrong is if Lingard smashes both of them. And that's exactly what happened. And that is basically what uh, kind of nailed my red arrow. I was already on one, but that really put it down like 400 places. Antonio off injured, super frustrating. Dawson zero points just wasn't a good game week for me at all so that was bad we're on a bit of a red arrow trend right now let's see how we can fix it so for game week 31 i have two free transfers right which is ideal i kind of need it to be honest this week um and i knew that i'd want two free transfers this week because obviously wild carders or a lot of people are using their wild card this week there's a few fixture swings and all that stuff we've been talking about for weeks so i wanted two free transfers originally it was like how can i get jotter in for rafinha and i'll swap out martinez but as it's looking right now like martinez has to stay for me it's like liverpool uh and then it's uh, man city i think after that right so two really poor fixtures the only thing you get with him is a lot of save points generally so i'd hope that he wouldn't come out of those two games with minus points and then it is west brom in game week 33 so that is not the end of the world and then after that i'll reassess if i've got a free transfer maybe i'll get rid of him but at that point the two really bad fixtures have gone 
And yes, they're not perfect after West Brom, but he also has a double game week to come as well. So I could actually see myself now keeping Martinez for potentially the rest of the season. That doesn't mean I, I don't think like swapping into someone like Mendy is, is a bad idea all of a sudden. But obviously, FPL is all about managing your own team. And for me, I now have two big injury problems in Tierney and Antonio. Uh, and obviously, Man City rotation is rife. I've got, I'm trying to not use my free hit in game week 33. Martinez becomes such like less of a priority now to transfer out i just can't do it i don't have the transfer to do it unless by the way when i'm talking about this you have a better idea for my transfers i'd love to hear it below because i tweeted out this morning um that sometimes it feels like you can think about your transfers over and over again and still think that you've got it wrong so let me know if there's a good way i can get rid of martinez and also deal with my issues so looking at the team right and i'm um, really quickly the reason i'm not looking at using the free hit in 33 is because in 35 there could be a double and in 36 there could be a blank and because we don't know what it's going to look like yet i feel like i should probably save the free hit if it comes down to what like we know what those fixtures will be before 33 and i can manage it without the free hit then i'll probably just free hit in 33 as planned but as it stands right now i'm kind of in between right so i'm kind of making transfers thinking that i'm not going to use it but i still could use it right so i've set the team up like this because this is how it was set up before the injuries okay um and obviously i could put bamford in instead of antonio and dallas instead of tierney but i don't want to do that because they play man city the whole point of having tierney was because he's got a great fixture and antonio's fixture is better than bamford's now tierney is out for four to six weeks he has to go long term i mean i could bench him this week but dan burns not getting in the team and dallas plays man city not ideal I probably want to take him out. Plus, he's quite expensive. And I feel like there's definitely long-term defenders that I could go for. And with Antonio, there's, I've already seen rumors that he's out for the season. I haven't seen that from anywhere credible yet. Ex-West Ham employee who's on Twitter um, has said he hasn't trained yet. Like He's definitely out for this week, I would say. like That's kind of how I'm thinking about it. Whether or not he's back after that, I don't know. But could I get rid of him? I probably could. I don't think there's too many striker options right now to be completely honest you'll see what i'm thinking about doing um in just a minute but i think he has to go in terms of captain i'm probably going to captain salah gundogan and de bruyne are a problem for me and i don't know who's going to start my money if i had to bet is that gundogan's got more of a chance than de bruyne but who knows how pep's mind's working who knows what the fitness levels are looking like who knows when they're planning to rotate in the future etc they might both play right they might neither of them could play right and you might think well how is he going to play without De Bruyne or Gundogan we did that in game week 28 against Fulham so it wasn't even that long ago so I'm, I'm thinking that long term I probably need to get rid of them it's super frustrating because their fixtures are Leeds, Villa, Blank, Crystal Palace and they've even got new I think it, then it's Chelsea then Newcastle so the fixtures are really good and they're obviously great players like Kevin De Bruyne I really want to captain him this week I'm so tempted and if I keep him I might be tempted to put the captaincy on him and the vice captaincy on Salah, hoping that if he doesn't play, that he doesn't come on. He was brilliant in the previous um, match against Leeds. I don't know how he didn't come away with any points, and that's what's tempted me to keep him. With Son and Kane, I have to keep them for the double. Rafinha and Bamford, I'm not against getting rid of them, but I also don't think it's that much of an issue to keep one. Depending on how I do my transfers, I could just keep one, bench that player, and just hold them for the longer term. I'm worried about Dawson. Rice is out. They've conceded five in the last um, two games. They conceded two against Wolves and three against Arsenal. Leicester's not going to get any easier. I'm not, to be honest, I'm not expecting a clean sheet there at all. I'm just hoping for an attack and return from him. Luckily, the fixtures get a bit better after this week the tricky one they've got left is Chelsea and that's in game week 33 and I'm probably going to have to play him as I'll show you later uh, but it is what it is right game week 33 without a free hit and no wild card is going to be a mess I think you just have to accept that uh, and obviously Martin as I've just spoken about Rudiger played in the Champions League any talk of him you know bust up and, and not in Tuchel's plans rubbish he's back in playing Champions League football they've just kept a clean sheet against Porto um, I think he'll be fine hopefully he'll play in that Crystal Palace game so that's how it's looking Salah captain i think just because i'm more sure of him starting than i am of either de bruyne or gundogan i could captain kane he's got a complete rest may night they're playing in the europa league on thursday or tonight by the time this video goes out 
but I just don't fancy it. Top six fixtures like that, I always try and avoid Cap C. Uh, and Salah is probably my man, second to De Bruyne. So it's going to be one of those two. It's going to be Salah. It's going to be De Bruyne. I know I've still not got Fernandez. I'm not too worried about him this week because he's playing Spurs. But I might consider him in a couple of weeks' time, which, again, I'm going to come on to in a sec. So what I'm going to do is talk through my potential transfers and why I like each one. Uh, and then I'm going to show you it on the actual like kind of FPL site because I think it'll be easier to picture and talk about why I'm doing those moves and what Game Week 33 like. So obviously, if you just want to hear me talk about the team and see potential transfers, that's next. If you want to carry on a bit further, I'm going to do some tinkering later on too. So this is kind of how all over the place I am, right? I've got three different sets of fi uh, transfers, I should say, not fixtures. And I still think there's possibly a different way I might go. But this is what I'm looking at. Now, obviously, the common theme with all of them is... Tierney and Antonio out. I think Tierney definitely, obviously, four to six weeks. Antonio, I'm just not sure whatever more he says. Unless he says he's fit and he's going to start, which I don't think he will. Uh, I'm not trusting him this week, and I think I can just afford to get rid of him. I love the guy, uh, but I don't want these injury concerns in my team. So he goes in all three situations. Now, the top one is getting rid of Kevin De Bruyne. Now, I might captain him this week. But I'm a bit worried about doing it because I don't know if he'll start. And I know with Man City recently, if they haven't started, they haven't come on. But I don't really want to necessarily take that risk. And Salah captain could be fine. So I'm not captaining this week. I'm not captaining him in game week 32. He doesn't play in 33. Kane plays Sheffield United and, and Leeds in 34 and 35. So I don't even necessarily need him as a captain. The reason I love him is because he's brilliant. I think he's... I think he's kind of undervalued a little bit in the community. I think they're kind of, because he hasn't been on this great run of goals and assists, people kind of, you'll hear people say he's out of form, he hasn't been scoring many open play goals. For me, his underlying stats are so good, they are going to come to the front at some point, and he's going to start banging in goals, uh, and he's going to start getting more assists. And he's a massive differential. Because people are put off, that's one of the reasons I love him. Like I love differentials like this, where they are almost guaranteed to play in normal circumstances. They're low-owned, but they're also proven players. But the problem is, I don't know if he's going to play, and I don't want this headache. He's also like 11.8 million. It's not cheap for me, right? So in that scenario, I bring in Trent, Jota, and Vardy. Now, as you can see from the transfers in, in all of them, Jota is coming in. I've talked about that for the last couple of weeks. So I'm fairly set on that. Is there a chance he doesn't play against Villa? Possibly. But I just think for his price and the value, it's worth going for. I might regret that if he doesn't play, of course. Um... And I'm not going to captain him anyway. So it's not really a huge concern for me for that. Trent is someone I'm strongly looking at. Now, I'll be honest. I tweeted about him a few weeks ago saying that he had this great fixture run and that people might want to consider him. All, all the replies were just like, Liverpool can't keep clean sheets. He's no good. He hasn't been getting attacking returns. Obviously, the tables are turned now and everyone loves him. But to be honest, I hadn't. although I tweeted that and said that people should look at him, I also said he's quite a lot of money and I probably wouldn't be able to fit him in myself. Now I can if I'm if I'm prepared to do this transfer. And it lets me get in Jamie Vardy, um, who has between game week 32 and 35, arguably has better fixtures than Bruno Fernandes. Because that's essentially what I'm doing. I'm betting on Vardy over Bruno, right? I've bet on De Bruyne over uh, sorry, yeah, I've bet on De Bruyne over Bruno. Now I'm potentially betting on Vardy over Bruno. Got nothing against Bruno Fernandez, by the way. I love the guy, right? I love that he's at Man United and he's brilliant. But I just think the fixtures are slightly better for Vardy. And again, it's trying to take that calculated risk of the fact that I'm probably not going to captain Bruno Fernandez apart from possibly in game week 33. But even in that week, Salah has Newcastle. Um, and Vardy has Crystal Palace, I think. So it's not even the end of the world that Fernandes has Leeds, even though I know we smashed them last time. But I'd be taking a punt over 32 or even 31 to 35 that Vardy could score more points because of the fixtures. He's also on penalties. His underlying stats look just as good as last year. Hasn't converted into goals yet, but I wouldn't write him off just yet. I know he's getting on a bit, but he's still starting every single game. My main worry about Vardy is he's got this hip impingement, which is one of those injuries where he can't just shake it off, and he's not. I think he's not able to train straight after a match. So at some point, that's going to affect him quite a lot. But right now, they seem to be managing it. With the second one, um, I would take out Rafinha for Jota. Trent, I could still get in, but I'd have to downgrade Antonio to Vidra, right? And I have the exact money to do that right now. Um, obviously, Vidra's starting for Burnley. You're going to see him in a lot of wildcard teams. Um, 
he plays in game week 33 as, as well against Wolves. But to be honest, even from now until game week 33, I'm not wouldn't be massively convinced that he would necessarily keep his place, especially if Barnes was back. But we don't know when that's going to be. The thing with that is it lets me keep De Bruyne and Gundogan and risk that they play against Leeds, and then it keeps that premium spot in midfield that I could then do De Bruyne to Fernandez down the line maybe in 32 maybe in 33 bearing in mind I've still got Salah and Kane for captaincies anyway and then the last one is the same three players out but instead of Trent I go for Azpilicueta uh, now actually I can afford to get Alonso in for free and just keep Antonio and bench him uh, but I probably won't do that I'll probably go for Azpilicueta because he's a bit safer in terms of starts and then I can get Ian Acho. Right, so I could play in Acho over Bamford this week, uh, and then next week, obviously, the run of good fixtures for Leicester starts. So that is the three that I'm thinking about. The bottom one, Azpilicueta, Jota, Ian Acho, that kind of keeps my structure as it is. It gives me eight good attackers to pick from every single week. That probably helps a little bit more with Game Week 33. The top one gives me Trent, who is a massive differential. And also, the reason I love Trent is the fixtures are just so good all the way to the end of the season. With Chelsea, it's not quite the same. Right, and Azpilicueta is obviously not attacking, but you do save some money. But the top one lets me get Vardy, who I think could be a big differential. But Looking at the stats, I don't even know if it's worth betting against Ian Acho. The thing you get with Vardy is guaranteed starts, probably more minutes, and penalties, which is quite big. But is it worth like nearly £5 million worth of budget? And the middle one is kind of the one I'm, I'm almost least interested in because, for me, I probably need that third spot striker to play quite often. And I'm just not sure I want to rely on Vidra. So that's my transfer plans. Let me know below what you think. I think, in general... Getting rid of De Bruyne and Gunwan is probably something I'm looking at over the next few weeks. So, although it looks a bit crazy because De Bruyne plays Leeds, it's all going to come down to whether or not I think he's going to start. I'll listen to what Pep Guardiola says in the press conference because although he's not going to give us the lineup, at times before he's been asked about certain players' fitness and he's just been like, yeah, they could just play every game. We need De Bruyne to play every game. And then he did play every game after that over Christmas. So we'll see what happens with the press conference. That's what I'm thinking about. Let's look at But that is it now, by the way. That is the transfer that I'm looking at. So if you want to switch off now, go for it. Otherwise, I'm going to look at it on the FPL page uh, and kind of just talk about it a little bit more. Okay, so the reason I wanted to do this as well is to kind of show you what I'm thinking about with Gaming 33 and how many players I might have playing. So let's just go through some of the transfers first. So Tierney... De Bruyne and Antonio out, and then there'll be Jota in, who's going to be in for every single one, basically. Um, with Trent and Jota, where are you? And then Vardy, right? So, do, do, do. Jamie Vardy. Now, to be honest, I don't necessarily think the West Ham away is the best fixture, even if they have conceded five goals um, in the last couple of games. But West Brom, Palace, Southampton, and Newcastle is brilliant, right? The the couple of things that are putting me off Jamie Vardy is what like one like I said I don't know if he's as good, uh, really as good as Ian Acho two I'm betting against Bruno Fernandez it feels like quite a big risk I know people are going to say you've had red arrows that's because you've not owned Bruno but that's not true De Bruyne has basically matched or even outscored Bruno since I got him in so that hasn't been the reason I've got the red arrows in fact last week it was bloody Jesse Lingard right um, so that that's a consideration for him and the rest time in between between games is pretty good I'm not massively concerned about this hip impingement unless it kind of flares up into something more than it already is um so that's an option but obviously the thing with him is if i want to swap back then to having a big midfield like a, a bruno or a de Bruyne back or whoever it's then two transfers to go back right but either way i'm kind of happy to make three transfers this week so i have two freebies so it's only a minus four and to be honest this team needs a couple of hits over the next few weeks um i would say to cope with 33 and to kind of just try and keep up so that's something i could do then in game week 33 i'd have i'd, I'd have to bench kane and son i think gundawan's probably going to go for me um eventually like in this team i have one point uh, one million in the bank so I could get Lingard. I could drop him down to Neto. That's someone else that I'm looking at. But I think Gunnar will be gone for me by game week 33. Uh, so then I've got Kane and Son not playing. So I'd have to play Vardy and Bamford. That's two. Rafinha, three. Jota, four. Not Gundogan, obviously, but Gundogan's replacement would be five. Salah would be six. And the goalkeeper, seven. Then I've got to play another four players. So Trent, Rudiger... Dawson and I'd have to play Dallas in game week 33 he plays Man United at home not ideal at all though he did score in the reverse fixture and annoyingly Dan Byrne has Sheffield United away but he's not in the team at the moment right getting Byrne over Veltman is so annoying like if I just if I didn't have to make that transfer when I did 
and we knew Lamptey was out for the season. I'd have Veltman like everyone else. So that, that is, ma- I won't lie, that is massively frustrating. That's just one of those things in FPL, completely situational. Had I made the transfer a few weeks there, like everyone else, I would have got Veltman. It is what it is, right? Um, the other option is to keep De Bruyne, to get rid of Rafinha for Jota instead. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to keep putting Jota back in, which is super annoying, I know. Um, and then I got 1.6 to fund it. So this would be Vidra. Okay, so let me just put him in. Uh, Vidra, 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 Vidra. Oh, yeah, he's a, he's a forward, not a defender, right? Um, now, he has played... I don't know if I can show you this. Yes, I can. He has played the last six games. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. He scored two goals, one assist. I'm not, I mean, I'm not massively worried about what he's got as long as he's playing. Newcastle this week, arguably, you could just play him this week if you bring him in. And in 33, it's Wolves. And outside of that, I could just play... Vardy, Vardy could become Ian Acho in game week 32, right, and not have Vardy, and I just bench Vidra, that's an option too, uh, but that's zero in the bank, so if Jota goes up again, or Vidra goes up again, that's going to hurt me, uh, but obviously Trent's fixtures, like I've said, they're so good for the rest of the season, and I feel like if they get knocked out of the Champions League, he's going to play every single game anyway, and even if they're not, I, feel, I still feel like he's going to play like 99% of those games, maybe 95%, whatever you want to say. So that's one of those fixtures as well. Again, looking at game week 33, yes, I'd have Vidra if he's kept his place. Uh, Bamford, the thing is then, I've got to deal with De Bruyne and Gundogan. But in game week 32 then, I could get Fernandez back in. So I'm basically going for Fernandez over, um, over Vardy. Um, but just from 32, I just think... For Vardy, it's West Brom. Leeds is good, obviously. But for Vardy, it's Palace. Then he plays Liverpool. Then it's Villa away, which isn't bad. Leicester, Fulham, Wolves. The fixtures are okay. I don't want to overthink them too much. They're not bad for Fernandez. And then Gundogan. I think Jesse Lingard's six point three now. Um, so I, I don't know. If, I don't even know if I'd go for him. But I, could, I would definitely be able to afford Neto. Right? Th- these players aren't going to go up so much. I won't be able to afford this. 0.5. So. Just, just again to go through this, right? Because I know it's not that easy to follow. Trent Jota Vidra in this week for minus four, and then thirty-two Fernandez, and then thirty-three Neto, and in thirty-three they play. Um, obviously, it's Burnley, isn't it? Yeah, which isn't a bad fixture. Then it's West Brom. The only thing is, I'm a little bit worried about Wal- like bringing him in from kind of game week 33, 35 onwards. It's not fantastic, but he is cheap. And again, when his fixtures get bad at the end of the season. Uh, or not as good, like Spurs, Everton, Man United, I could possibly bench him and play Bamford. But again, that means I'm relying on Vidra. So uh, this, I, I'm just not sure about this. I'm not being, I'm not sure about being lumbered with Vidra. All right. So the last option, I'll just go back to this page to start again, is Tierney for a Chelsea defender. Now, interestingly, I can afford to do this as it stands, but only just um, Alonso in for Tierney, and then loop. Uh, Jota in for Rafinha. Now I can afford that with zero in the bank again, right? Uh, I should really I should have cropped this so you could see that as I went. That means I get to keep Antonio. I would just bench him this week and play Bamford against Man City, and then I would only do this if I knew that Antonio was back soon. Maybe even for Newcastle in 32. Obviously Burnley in 34. He's got some good fixtures. Right, but I just don't know how reliable he's going to be for them. But doing those free transfers, and Alonso's probably going to play because Chilwell missed out, and then Chilwell might play the Champions League again, and then Alonso can play Brighton. But I'm not sure I want to rely on that. So realistically, this would probably be Aspilicueta, um, like I said, and I'd have to make up 0.2 million. Now I can still keep Antonio by doing this. By the way, I don't have to get Ian Acho in. I just think that if he's going to keep his place for those great fixtures, he's probably worth having. It could be Dallas down to Holding. It could be um, Burn down to a Mitchell. Whatever it might be, it could be. It could be. By the way, if I do this, Burn to Phillips. Right. This is another way to fund it. This is this is what I mean about transfers. I'm all over the place. So I could just get Phillips in who obviously is going to probably play, looks to be nailed in that Liverpool team, with some pretty good fixtures. Just the attacking threat is not there, obviously, like it is for Trent. Um, So that's something I could do as well. That lets me keep Antonio, which I might consider doing if he's back soon. If he's out long term, he's definitely going. Uh, But that's another option. It it means I block off Trent. I don't think I get Trent if I do this. And then I do the same moves after that. So I do De Bruyne to Fernandez and Gundogan to Neto probably maybe to Lingard if I can afford it and I want him um and then potentially in game week 33 so let's pretend these two are gone right I know these are loads of transfers I most people are probably turned off by this bit but I like doing this it kind of gets my thoughts out there um 
so let's do Wolves. Uh, let's just get Neto in. I'm not even going to get into Neto versus Lingard at this point. So again, 0.5 million off, uh, 0.5 in the bank. So potentially, if all my if all my players were fit by 33, which I realise what's just happened this week could happen again, I'd have Antonio Bamford, Jota. I'd only have to bench Son and Kane. So Antonio Bamford's two, three, four, five, six. Good counting. Seven for the goalkeeper. I'd have to play four defenders, but this time. I'd have Chelsea against West Ham. Maybe not the best, but it's okay. Two Chelsea defenders versus West Ham. Phillips against Newcastle. And then I could play one of Dallas or Dawson. And if one of my Chelsea players, most likely Rudiger, misses out, then I'd have the other one out of Dawson and Dallas. And I think most people, if they've not got a wild card, are probably not going to have the perfect team for game week 33. And I'm going to have... The main captains, Fernandez and Salah. So I'm not too worried about that. I've got Jota. Obviously, you know, there's risks over Jota wherever you're going to start every week. And that is something I'm conscious of. But that is another way I can play it. So basically, right, Tierney's gone. Antonio's probably gone. And Jota is coming in. It just depends whether I get rid of De Bruyne for Vardy. Or do I just wait and keep him for Leeds? And if I get any inclination he's starting, I'm probably going to keep him. And I just get Fernandez in instead. So I've been talking for nine minutes over those transfers. In some way, I hope that was useful. I think it was just me rambling on. Um, but yeah, that's my current thoughts. Um, I think I think what I need to strip it back to is who do I want to captain? Make sure I've got them in place. I want Jota, so he comes in. Just how do I do it? And then work backwards from there. Trent is someone I really want, though. But how much sacrifice do I want to make up front? So there we go. That's it. I don't even know if that was useful in any way, shape, or form. Uh, well over 20 minutes, I'm sure. I think like when people, when you, when you see content creators, whatever, YouTubers, podcasters, whatever it might be, I think that everyone kind of sees them as these FPL managers that just know what they're doing or they know exactly what they're going to do every single week there's no stress or anything like that and like you see that on the deadline streets people think it's forced like the tension like the not knowing what to do i am not looking forward to tomorrow's deadline stream at all right if i've not got my transfers locked in it's going to be pain because i'm going to be umming and ahhing still and i'm just yeah just a regular fpl manager that sometimes just doesn't know exactly what they want to do and there's so many variations, but these videos help me talk about it. That's why I split it into those sections, because people don't have to watch to the end if they don't. If you did enjoy it, do give it a like. Hit subscribe for new around here as well. If you want to check out more, get a few more benefits, perks, Q&As, all that good stuff, I do have Patreon. There's a link in the description below. Everybody that signs up, as you know, goes up on the Legends wall, the absolute legends that you all are. Thank you for the continued support. If you want to check it out, link in the description below. I will be back maybe later today with Campsy. Otherwise, I'm going to put it out tomorrow. Tomorrow, deadline stream tomorrow probably like a two hour one um I, I probably need two hours just to think again over my trance even though i've given it so much thought but there'll be a deadline stream tomorrow so make sure to look out for that one thank you for watching this if you made it all the way through you're an absolute legend i'll see you soon